I'm going to tell you a short story about the Bohr effect. The Bohr effect is the relationship between pH and hemoglobin's ability to bind oxygen. Now pH refers to the amount of hydrogen ions in solution. A low pH is an acidic solution and it has a large number of hydrogen ions. A high pH is a basic solution and has a low number of hydrogen ions. Now let's just talk a little bit about what causes a pH change in our blood. Now the bloodstream is has a very s narrow range of pH that is required. Um, the bloodstream pH is right around 7.2 to 7.4. Um, any variation from this, and we can enter either a state of acidosis if it goes below 7.2, or alkalosis if it goes above 7.4, or uh, around there. Um, and so what causes a change in pH of our bloodstream is first and foremost the amount of carbon dioxide in our blood. Carbon dioxide is produced by our cells in the citric acid cycle. You'll learn more about the citric acid cycle in the case studies metabolism task for this course. Um, but the citric acid cycle, uh, each round through the citric acid cycle produces two CO2s, carbon dioxides, and all of our cells are going to be doing at least some citric acid cycle producing CO2 because the other product of the citric acid cycle is a whole lot of stuff that turns into ATP. ATP is our cell's energy. Our cell needs a lot of energy. So it pretty much means that most of our cells are going to be producing CO2 all the time. Maybe not all of our cells, but most of them. So we're talking about a whole lot of CO2 being made by our cells in our body. And we know that our lungs blow out CO2. We breathe in oxygen, we blow out uh, CO2, and so our lungs are absolutely crucial in maintaining this pH balance in our butt, blood, this 7.2 to 7.4. So since we are, all of our cells are producing all this CO2, you know that we're blowing breathing out the CO2 from our lungs, so it's crucial that all that CO2 get back to the lung so that the lung can expel it for us. So what winds up happening then is as the blood is moving through the body, it's picking up this carbon dioxide that's being produced by all these cells to deliver it to the lung so the lung can expel it. Now, what that really means is that as we're traveling through the body, and when I say we, I mean I'm a hemoglobin molecule, um, I'm the bloodstream. So here's a, a guy, and we are blowing out CO2 from the lung. So in the lung is kind of like the point where we have our lowest amount of CO2. lowest amount of CO2 and CO2 if we look at this little picture here it shows us that CO2 plus water produces something called H2CO3 which is carbonic acid this is a fancy way of saying that carbon dioxide is the acid component of our blood. So in the lung, we have our lowest amount of CO2, or the most basic pH level in the blood, is in the lung. And we start traveling. Uh, obviously, the blood goes straight to the heart, and the heart pumps it 
to the rest of the body. As the blood starts moving, it's going to start picking up CO2 from all these cells that it's passing by. And all that CO2 is now going to be going into the bloodstream, lowering the pH. So, as we're lowering the pH, it continues to lower as we travel farther and farther down, all the way down to the toes. And so, because of this, the more and more CO2 pick, we pick up, the lower the pH the blood will be. So, an increase in CO2 equals a decrease in pH. And so that technically means when we get to the fingers and toes, probably is going to be the lowest pH of our blood in our body. Then it starts traveling back up through the veins so that it can bring all that CO2 back to the lung. The lung can get rid of it for us, and we, the whole thing starts all over again. So what does that mean for hemoglobin binding oxygen? So we have this nice little graph here. And we have two lines on this graph. We have a line at pH 7.4 and a line at pH 7.2. So 7.4 is like the lung. 7.2 is the toes. If I could spell toes. I can spell toes. It just doesn't really look like it. Toes. Okay. So... At pH 7.4, we're in the lung. And what's in the lung but a whole lot of oxygen? So what's fantastic is pH 7.4 in the lung means that hemoglobin is super, super strongly attracted and high affinity for oxygen. And all that oxygen that's floating around in the lung gets bound to hemoglobin. So you can see on this graph, so our partial pressure of oxygen is going to be close to 100 in the lung, between 80 and 100. And you can see hemoglobin is just about 100% saturated with oxygen. Well, that's fantastic. We would we will need hemoglobin to be 100% saturated with oxygen in the lung because that's where the only place the hemoglobin is going to get oxygen. Hemoglobin is not going to be able to pick up oxygen in our toes because we're not breathing oxygen in in our toes. So, fantastic. All the hemoglobin has bound up oxygen from the lung. And now we start traveling. As we start traveling through those tissues, we're going to start picking up CO2. The pH is going to start going down. And what that really means is that as the pH lowers, hemoglobin is going to be more readily able to release oxygen. So lower pH equals hemoglobin releases, oh, again I can't spell, releases oxygen better. And this is so super important because if hemoglobin was able to just release all that oxygen right away, there wouldn't be enough oxygen to get all the way to the toes. So I like to say that the bore, if, if traveling through the bloodstream is a marathon, the bore effect is the stamina that get, is the, the stamina that hemoglobin has in order to get all the way to the fingers and toes and run all 26 miles of the marathon of traveling through the bloodstream. So without the Bohr effect, it's entirely possible that hemoglobin would release all that oxygen at the beginning instead of being able to travel through all the tissue and release 
the oxygen slowly instead of all at once. That, I believe, is my complete story on the Bohr effect.